In what was probably the worst kept secret in the automotive industry, Chevy decided to move the engine to the middle for the eighth generation Corvette. Now this has had a drastic impact on the performance, on the drive layout, on how it looks, and where it's positioned in the market. I've got the 2020 Chevy Corvette Stingray with the Z51 performance package, and today I'm gonna show you what it's all about. So let's start off with the exterior of the 2020 Corvette where boy oh boy does it look different from the last generation model. Although some elements have stayed the same, you have a very pointy front end. You're gonna have a lot of people mistaking this for a Lamborghini or a Ferrari that don't know cars super well. You of course have your Corvette logo here on the front with your checkered flags. Now this one is finished in rapid blue, which is I think the most outrageous color. We even have rapid blue seat belts to match. Now the front end here is pretty pretty low, we've got the splitter as part of our Z51 package, but you don't have to worry too much about the low front end. First of all, I really haven't scraped it anywhere when I've been driving along this week, but you also have a nose lift that'll lift it up a few inches more to make it even better for like a tall driveway or something like that. We've got these black wheels, they're optional even on the Z51 package, they cost about $1,000. Corvette has a bunch of wheel options and I really am not a fan of any of them. They kind of look a bit too small to me. That's just just my personal preference, but again, that's easily fixable on the aftermarket. Now we come to the back, we've got our glass rear window where you can peek in and view your 6.2 liter V8 LT2 engine. Now we still have the quad taillight design that's been present on Corvettes pretty much its entire life. They look a lot different, a little bit more Camaro-like than they ever have before. They're not round like they were way back in the C6 generation. We've got a little Stingray up here and we've got a spoiler for the Z51 package. And now when Corvette was, when Chevy was designing this car, the first thing they did was they created a prototype that was actually a Holden Ute with a V8 engine just squ squeezed where the bed would be. And it kind of gives you these big truck-like proportions. This car feels really big when you're driving it. It does not feel like a very small sports car. And if I really had to nitpick, I do think the design looks great, but here around the back, they really made the back end really long, and that's to position a big trunk with golf clubs. I think that kind of threw off the proportions just a bit. But again, I'm just being nitpicky. I think this car looks fantastic. You're gonna get a ton of looks in it. All right, so now that we've checked out the exterior of the 2020 C8 generation Corvette, let's go ahead and check out the interior, which is radically different from any Corvette there has ever been before. You used to have, you know, two seats and then your big trunk area in the back, much different feel now. Everything's digital. We have this very driver-oriented cockpit with everything canted towards the driver. We have the central screen here instead of analog gauges. We've got our our typical General Motors uh, touchscreen navigation system here with volume and a home button. And then we've got this, the big ribbon of climate control buttons that has been somewhat controversial on the internet. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that later. But first I wanna start off with the materials because Chevy has often been criticized. Oh, the Corvette does not have a nice interior. You know, oh, the Europeans are better. Not anymore, folks. This is the LT2 or the 2LT trim level. So there's three trim levels. You can do 1LT, 2LT, or 3LT. So we have the mid-level one. And I just want to say, for being the mid-level one, the materials in here, here feel excellent. The leather is really nice. We've got some nice suede on the steering wheel. We've got some suede on the seats as well. Almost everything uh, that I can touch is leather, like the door cards leather. There's some nice metal that feels really nice as well. All of the controls are knurled or solid feeling. This really does feel like a premium car that's worth its price tag. If I had to nitpick, and I guess I kind of do because I'm a car reviewer, <laughs> you may have seen this already on the internet. Some of the stitch lines, um, I think Chevy does hand do these. They have somebody that hand stitches uh, this leather here. Some of the stitch lines are a little uh, crooked. Uh, so if you really like want to like nitpick for that, I guess that's one area you could criticize. But I'm going to give this interior an overall win. I think it feels super premium in here, like you're getting into a luxury or almost into an exotic car. Uh, so now let's talk about the game 
gauges. These look great. They have so much information on them. I have the tachometer right in the middle with my speed. I love that. You can have two gauges off to the left here. I currently have it showing oil pressure and economy, but it can show a bunch of other things. On the right, you have your trip computer, uh, fuel economy, things like that. You can also use this for a bunch of performance uh, features. So you can have a zero to 60 timer. We'll show that out in the road, a lap timer. Uh, you can have your G meter right here. You can have zero to 60, uh, 60 to zero braking, things like that. Really cool on there. You can also have it showing your audio, maintenance, uh, other options, things like that. You also have a head up display showing your speed and things like that. Now, all of this changes when you change the drive modes, but first we'll talk about um, where you do that. So here's the drive mode selector here. It's got this big thing that says mode on it with the little Corvette logo and you've got a rotating shifter here. Uh, so if I tilt it over to the left, I've got my mode. Uh, so basically that lets you set this up however you want and the gauges can change depending on your mode as well. So my mode is fully configurable. You can adjust the suspension, steering, all of those sorts of things. There's a weather mode. So if you're driving this car in the rain or maybe even the snow, uh, it'll, you know, kind of reduce things, you know, make it a little more tame. Uh, you've got tour mode, which is your base. You can go over to sport. Uh, so as you can see, the tachometer gets a little bit bigger. Uh, my gauges on the left change to G-force and oil temperature, things that are a little more important to driving. And if I tilt once more to track, now I have a big tachometer right across the top of the screen. Uh, my performance gauges become much more prominent and I love how Chevy has prioritized the higher part of the gauge because that's really of uh, the tachometer. That's really what you want to focus on for your shifts. One to 2000 uh, RPM isn't really as important. You're really focusing on the high RPM stuff. So I love the design of this. It's simple, it's intuitive, and it's easy to access. Now let's talk about what surrounds the drive mode controllers. Uh, we have an eight speed dual clutch transmission, no manual anymore, so you can't have a big shifter here. Instead, you get these buttons, push for park, pull this one for reverse, push for neutral, put, pull this for drive, and then you have another button here to put it into manual mode. And you may notice when I put it into drive, you have a forward facing camera. That is so nice, so you're never gonna have to worry about scraping this car on, uh, on pavement, uh, on a parking curb, or anything like that, and for uh, added uh, ease of use if you're going over like maybe you have a steep driveway you do have a nose lift optional on the Corvette uh, I'm not going to talk too much about the infotainment system. Watch any of my other recent Cadillac or Chevy uh, or GMC reviews to hear about this. I love this system. It's absolutely great. Um, really quick responses. Android and Auto app, uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay come standard, as does a Wi-Fi hotspot. And with the Corvette, we have the Performance Data Recorder. So that will, if you have an SD card installed, will use the cameras around the car, and it'll let you record lap times and. Uh, go Go back and re-watch that. That is a really cool feature. So again, this is just an absolutely great system. No uh, faults with that. So now let's talk about the row of buttons. I mentioned that that was in a bugaboo on the internet. I think it's fine actually. The one thing that's a little weird about it is if you have a passenger sitting next to you, you do feel really separated from them. So, but I guess that's their problem. Uh, it's all canted towards you. It's pretty easy to find stuff I've found actually, uh, because the things that you use the most often, the temperature controls, the fan speed, and then the temperature controls for the passenger are all raised. You have like a little uh, knob up here to make them easier to find. So I think that is pretty easy to use. You also have uh, GM puts this on a lot of cars now. Instead of just a regular rear view mirror, if I tilt this up, you have a camera view. That's gonna come in handy because the rear visibility out of this car is not great, but if you wanna look at the engine, you're gonna wanna leave it on that uh, regular mirror mode. You can see the engine just a little bit through that back window, but the rear window is not very big, so I do appreciate that they were able to put this camera system in here uh, to make it a little easier, easier to see out of. And now for the final bit, it, we've got our Carbuzz cup holder index. So I've got my big Yeti here that I'm gonna take a squig from. You can see this is a very large Yeti. We have our folding cup holder compartment here. You've just got like a nice cover over it. If you don't have a cup installed, you just push that up. And my large Yeti fits just fine, no problems. There are only two cup holders here, um, but they're reasonably sized. Uh, there's no cup holders on the door or anything like that. So I'm gonna give the Chevy Corvette a two out of five. You know, most sports cars don't really do too well on this category, but the Corvette gets a mediocre pass.
Now because the engine has been moved to the middle, that actually freed up Chevy to allow a frunk. That's a front trunk. So we have a release here on the key fob for each of the two trunks. You also have buttons on the door if you want to do it from there as well. Now I've got my big camera case here just to show you for size purposes. It fits in there, no problems at all. And there is a cargo net if I want to store something smaller and don't want it to roll around in there. And then I just shut it, push it closed. Now that frunk gets you four cubic feet of storage. Back here we have an exterior trunk release making it easy to do from pretty much anywhere outside, inside on the key fob. Out here we have 8.6 cubic feet of space, so a little more than double what you get in the frunk. Even when you combine those two numbers, the C8 still isn't as practical as the old C7, which had a massive rear trunk. Now that we have the hatch open, you can see that beautiful 6.2 liter V8 engine exposed. You have a little glass window to view it too. I love that they give you such great access to the engine. You can even get an engine light up kit that includes like LED lights to like brighten it up at night. That looks awesome. You can tell that this area was definitely designed with golf clubs in mind, you could easily fit a set of golf clubs here. You even have a nice cargo net for smaller items and grocery hooks so your bags don't go rolling away. But even though we have more than double the space in the trunk compared to the front area, what I will say is hard suitcases like this will not fit. They're just a little bit too tall for the trunk to close. So if you do have a hard suitcase about this size, you're probably going to want to stick it up in the front. Now when it's time to close this, you have a little handle here so you don't have to put your fingers on the paint. And then you can just use the Corvette Stingray logo here to push it down and it'll soft close the rest of the way. And before we get the Corvette out on the road, I want to mention this roof, because even though we don't have the convertible model of the Corvette, the Corvette has always been a Targa, and the C8 is no exception. There are three latches, two in the front, one on the back. It's actually the same one that you used to get on the C7, and you just undo those on the inside, and this roof will come right off. Now, you have to then take it here. You're going to start with the back first. You're going to put it down into the trunk, and then there are two mounting points. You kind of just have to make sure it's level, and then you kind of have to push it, and it will lock into place. Now, this does completely eliminate your trunk, and unlike last year's Corvette, there's no clever way that you can like pivot it up to access the roof, but it is nice that now if we come back, we do have this really nice gap here to make this a Targa experience. The one thing that I will say about this, though, is I've driven the car with the roof off, and it's not that loud. You don't get to hear the exhaust that much better because um, a lot of it comes through the speaker. So I actually like driving this car as a coupe. Next year for about $7,500, you will be able to get a convertible version of this car, which has a power roof. So you don't have to go through the trouble of literally getting out of the car, lifting it and putting it in the trunk. All right, so now we're behind the wheel of the first ever mid-engined Corvette. This is a big deal for Chevrolet. Now the engine that we have right behind this piece of glass is a 6.2 liter V8, just like the last generation model. This one's called the LT2, so it's a derivation of the old LT1 V8. It produces really good power, 490 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. Now that goes to the rear wheels only through an eight-speed dual-clutch transmission. This is the first time a Corvette has ever Ever used a dual clutch transmission we'll talk about how that feels out in the road and because it's a mid-engine with a dual clutch you are gonna get some outrageous 0 to 60 times Chevy claims that this will do 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds which is pretty crazy I haven't quite matched that but uh, let's see if we can hit it right now actually launch control is pretty easy I'm gonna have my 0 to 60 performance timer foot on the brake foot on the gas let's see what we get ready go oh boy oh, it rips that was quick. Now that was a 3.4 second zero to 60 time according to the car's in-car uh, data logger. Now that is a really quick time, not quite 2.9 seconds like Chevy claimed, but I'm gonna count that as a win. This car rips off the line. There was no traction, uh, no traction loss, no wheel spin, nothing. I just launched right off of there. You know, this thing has 305 section rear tires, so you are not gonna lose grip at all, even if you just go crazy off the line. So I mentioned 490 horsepower, but we have the Z51 performance pack on this car. Now this is a must have option if you're a real enthusiast. If you're just gonna drive your Corvette, you know, to the shops and back, and you know, you're like maybe an older customer, you don't need this package. But if you're a true driver, absolutely you must have it. It's $5,000, you get five extra horsepower, bringing the total up to 495 horsepower, and you get a ton of other stuff besides 
that. You get an electronic limited slip differential in the back. You get performance brakes. You get a performance exhaust that makes this car sound a little bit louder. I'm still a little bit disappointed in how it sounds. You heard on the launch there, it sounds really good. Uh, the V8 sounds really good at wide open throttle, but I'm gonna hit it now. Let's see. It sounds good. It's a good V8 noise. It's just not the loudest, most ferocious thing in the world, even with the performance exhaust. Wait for the Z06 and ZR, ZR1 models. I think those are going to be crazy loud. You also get a front splitter and a rear spoiler. I showed you those on the exterior. You also get a heavy duty cooling system. Now that's always been a Corvette bugaboo. This car will not overheat on a track, even with the engine in the middle. And you do get different tires. You get Michelin PS4S's size 245 in the front. And I already mentioned those massive 305 section tires in the rear. Those are very important for handling. This car is ridiculously fast. I already mentioned the 2.9 seconds, 0 to 60 time. It'll do the quarter mile in just 11.2 seconds, and this car will get real close to 200 miles an hour. Chevy says it'll do 194 miles per hour. That's crazy. So now that we've gone over all the performance stats, let's just talk about what it's like to drive a Corvette in the middle because it's, it's so different than before. The fact that the engine is in the middle, you might think this would be more of an extreme car, but I wanna talk about how shockingly comfortable this car is. We have the optional Magna Ride suspension, also a must have. I think you absolutely need to get Mag Ride. Basically what that'll do is it'll absorb the bumps and it can uh, use the adaptive suspension to absorb the road and calculate uh, the road. So you go over train tracks, large dips in this car and they just do not punish you. I'm telling you, this car is like as comfortable as a Camry. It's pretty quiet in here as well. Like it's not the most quiet car. You're still pretty low to the ground like you know you still have the removable roof and things like that but I could easily drive this car every day I mentioned that this is the first time Chevy has ever put a dual clutch transmission in a Corvette and it's pretty smooth like I really don't notice it being jerky or clunky maybe a little bit at slow speeds but it's not bad at all I would have zero problems daily driving this car and when you're driving along normally it's running on four cylinders it can shut down to become a v4 the fuel economy can be quite excellent if you drive this car normally. Chevy rates it at 15 mpg in the city, 27 on the highway, and 19 combined. I've averaged about 18 uh, before I was driving on the highway to get to my film spot today. I was only averaging about 11, so you can have this car drink fuel if you're really on it, but if you're not, it runs really quiet. So now let's talk about the steering. So like I already mentioned, this is a really weirdly shaped steering wheel. Uh, you kind of have to hold it down here uh, to get to the paddles. You can actually drop it into neutral whenever you want and just rev it. Listen to that. How cool is that? So you pull into a car show, pull both paddles, vroom, vroom, you can rev it without stopping. Love that Chevy put one of those in there. I think they copied that from Porsche. You can also use that to clutch kick if you're a little bit of a better driver. Not gonna anticipate uh, doing that today. And you have a ton of drive modes. So you, I've already showed you the drive mode selector uh, when we were on the interior. So when you put it into sport mode, you're gonna feel the steering start to weight up heavily. The exhaust gets a lot louder as well but I'm gonna go ahead and tick it over one more time for track mode. Now listen to how badly, how amazing this exhaust sounds in track mode. <laughs> it rips, shifts. That dual clutch shifts so quickly. Down shifts quickly too. There we go. Won't down shift yet. There we go. I get the tack on my head up display so I know exactly when to shift. <laughs> It shifts so quick, it pulls really hard. You do notice that the red line is not that high. Usually when I'm driving a car with an engine in the middle, it's an exotic, it's a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, and those have very high red lines. So it's a bit weird to have this car rev out below 7,000 RPM, but anywhere you go on that low RPM, there's so much torque low down that it never feels slow, even if you're in the wrong gear. I love the paddle shifters. They're metal. You really feel it like metal on metal. You hear the metallic clink of the paddles. That's great. The steering is not the best in the world, but it's precise. Like you really feel in control of this car. It doesn't give you a ton of feedback back to the driver, but it's good enough. It really just feels like a supercar. This doesn't feel like a sports car to me. I mean, the engine, 
I'm waiting. The Z06 and the ZR1, when those come out, those will be supercars, I promise you. I think this is still in sports car territory with the current engine that it has, but this is an amazing breeding ground. I cannot wait to see what Chevy does with it. And even in race mode, it's it's comfortable. It, it's a little stiffer now that I'm in race mode, but I'm gonna go ahead and push this button. This is the Z button. I love this button, it's so awesome. It allows you to configure the car, you have like all the options you can put the powertrain in track you can put the steering in you know track mode and then you can put the suspension in full comfort so this is my mode Z. now i have everything crazy i can rip it but the suspension is in comfort mode the steering's in comfort mode so it's not as like weighty i love the z button it gives me quick access so i don't have to mess around with the mode button i'm gonna say it for around 80 grand as this car is configured I don't know if I would need a McLaren or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini in my life. Now granted, those cars do feel a little more special with their V10s and V8s and exotic engines and you know and exotic interiors and things like that. But the working man's sports car just got a whole lot better. Watch out rest of the world. The Corvette's coming for you. So before we sum up our time with the 2020 Corvette, I just wanna go over pricing, because this is really important. Chevy with the one LT trim has managed to get the Corvette under $60,000. It's 59,995, so if you add a single option, you're gonna be over the $60,000 mark, and I really doubt that you're gonna find many Corvettes on the lot that are that basic. The one that we have is the two LT trim. It's a $7,300 jump, bringing the price to 67,295. Now that gets you a ton of Stuff. The 2LT is the one I really recommend. You get the head-up display, you get a wireless charger, heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, 14-speaker Bose stereo, navigation system, data recorder, you get the camera mirror that's really cool, and blind spot monitoring. That is so worth it as a package. We have a lot of extra stuff on our tester. Uh, we've got the Z51 package, we've got the GT2 seats, we have the Magna Ride suspension, and a few other things, bringing the price as tested to just over $80,000, which I think this is worth every penny. Uh, there's also a 3LT trim above this 2LT trim. That starts at 71945 I don't really recommend it. The only thing that it says you get are the GT2 seats as standard. So if you're gonna get those, maybe you should consider the 3LT. You also get Napa leather. You get carbon fiber trim on the inside, a little bit more suede and a little bit more leather. I just don't think that's worth it. Now, the big problem here is this is still very early on in the C8's life cycle and the coronavirus situation has really halted production for a while, so you probably can't wanna get one of these at MSRP. If you're watching this video later on, you should be able to get them at MSRP, and that makes the Corvette an absolute bargain. So that was the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. Now, just like all seven models before it, the Corvette is still a blue collar hero. It's a car that's reasonably attainable, but gives you access to performance that you used to only be able to get from Ferraris and Lamborghinis. I think this car looks outrageously cool. It has a really nice interior, like a really world-class interior for the first time ever. I think the platform is there for Chevy to build a car that is a performance monster. The Z06 and ZR1 versions of this car are really going to make Ferrari, Porsche, and Lamborghini look bad because this base car is already making them look kind of bad. I would highly recommend one of these if you can get them at MSRP. I wouldn't pay over one. I would just wait it out, get one for a normal price. But this is a world-class sports car and it shows that America is ready to compete on the world stage. We really hope you've enjoyed this review of the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette. For more videos like it, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. Also check us out on our other social media platforms including Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok where we have short little videos of the Corvette and a bunch of other cool cars that you may enjoy. I'll see you next time.